Hello. I always enjoy coming back and thinking about some of the things that Dr. Deming has said. Um, unfortunately, I've been familiar with Dr. Deming for probably almost 40 years right now. Um, but every time I, I go back, I think about it, each one of the key points. Despite all the times I do the red bead, it always surprises me. I get into it, and it's like, oh, I'm doing all the wrong things. So what I'd like to do now is walk through what the 14 points are. And they come from a book called Out of the Crisis. Uh, it's a very good read uh, if you're looking for some summer reading. Um, the first thing is to create a constant purpose towards improvement. Um, and I think you go back and, and there's two quotes, uh, Benjamin Disraeli, who said, the secret of success is constancy to purpose. Uh, constancy to purpose under uh, Dr. Deming is always improve, always become better. Um, and when you look at it, it's, it's a planning of, for the long term, planning for quality, planning for the company for the long term. Okay, and American companies today are very short-term focused. What do we need to do in the next quarter? Improving long-term has long-term effects, but the way corporations are managed in many cases today, it's short-term. And a lot of times when you have a short-term demand that earnings are coming out, we must hit the goals, is we don't necessarily fix anything, we simply put a patch in to move us along. Um, next point, I think, is a, a fascinating one, and that's just don't just do the same things better, but find better things to do. Predict and prepare for future challenges. Okay, what may happen? Think about disruptors. Okay, we talked about disruptors, how they changed so many things. This is what an organization needs to be able to do. Always have a goal of getting better. A lot of times we have financial goals, production goals, but we never look at getting better as much as we should. But the key piece here is these two here. Don't just do things better, but do different things better. Predict and prepare for the future. You don't know where that disruptor is going to come. And too many businesses have been just eliminate it because they couldn't predict and prepare. Kodak is a great example. They had digital photography before anybody else. But the people in the organization were so focused on film that they didn't let it come through. And it died. Um, adopt the new philosophy. Um, we're in a new economic age. I think our first piece told us that uh, when we look at the macro view, um, and management must be awakened to change and take charge. They need to be aware of what's going on as opposed to being in their own world. Um, number three and number four are very related, so I put them together. Uh, stop depending on inspections, building quality, constantly improve quality. Now, if we go back to the red bead, um, the inspectors, there were two inspectors and a chief inspector, uh, you were trying to, um, you're counting the defects. But think about that. We had four willing workers, one accountant, and three inspectors. They're costly. No doubt about that. They're costly. And unreliable uh, because, look, at I know there were times that you were doing that, and the three of you didn't count the same thing. You came up with different numbers. Um, and so some of this comes back, as we said, you want to build quality into the process. We want to take the red beads out before we produce them. We keep them from coming into the process. Um, don't just find what you did wrong and eliminate the wrongs altogether, but eliminate them. Improving quality over time reduces costs. It's ongoing. It's not a one-time thing. We look at some of the examples here, um, is that oftentimes we tend to live with delays and mistakes. Um, as Dr. Deming, I quote him directly here, we have learned to live in a world of mistakes and defective products as if they were necessary to life. It's time to adopt a new philosophy in America. Do not live with delays and mistakes. Some things 
we take for granted. Okay, um, yeah, there's going to be some error, uh, errors. It's not always going to work. But sometimes, if we leave ourselves that we only that good, and there's that new commercial that's out. Um, good is not enough. Um, sometimes we don't live with delays. Um, this one, um, take note. Take note. And he's used a couple of different numbers, but remember, we were doing the red bead. It was the process that was flawed, not the workers. And some of the research that Dr. Downing did, he concluded that after many, many years of research, that 85% of the reasons for failure are deficiencies in the systems and processes rather than the employee. 85% of the reasons for failure are deficiencies, things that aren't working in the system. The way the system and process is built is what is creating the errors, not the worker. The role of management, he suggests, is to change the process rather than badgering individuals to do better. I was badgering you guys. I told you, do better, do better. Okay, um, any day could be your last. But 85% of the reasons for failure are deficiencies in the systems and process. Now, when we move forward, we're going to be looking next at individual attributes and then things the company does. And I want you to keep this in mind. This is, this is absolutely critical, in my opinion, um, to do that. So we need to fix processes and systems, not people. Um, let's just take a moment on that. Um, a process is a sequence of steps or actions. It's, 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 it's running from here to here. These are the things that are done okay, to get a specific outcome. If this is the outcome, these are the inputs and the activities that are done. The process is a sequence of steps to provide a particular service or outcome. Now, planning involves identifying the process that are producing the roles, to find the boundaries of each process, and figuring out which parts you want to alter. So what we need to do is make sure the process works. Look at the process. And that leads to improving constantly and forever, number four. Uh, and that's a plan, do, check, act. We continually go back, do, check, act, plan. Okay? And that becomes this constant focus on this. Now, have I done some of these lectures before? Yeah. Could have I just cut and pasted old lectures? Yeah. But when things change, we bring in new things. His other fourth point is use a single supplier for any one item. He said that if you have a long-term relationship, it's better and better quality and lower and lower cost. A lot of times we jump around in business, we in the colloquial sense, um, we are looking for the lowest price. It doesn't matter uh, what, but it's always with the lowest price. Well, that may not give us longer term, lower cost, better quality. Number six, use on the job training. Uh, train for consistency to help reduce variation. We want to have consistency in that. Uh, build a foundation for common knowledge. Allow workers to understand their roles in the big picture. If you just tell them they're doing this a little bit, they do not engage as much. Sometimes they need to know what the big picture is. Where are we going? Um, encourage staff to learn from one another. Provide a culture and environment for effective teamwork. On-the-job training becomes an important thing to, to learn from one another. Uh, this is another quote, and I, for, for some reason, I, I really like some of these quotes. Um, it's not enough to do your best. You must know what to do and then do your best. I think if we go back to the red bead, um, you didn't know what you were doing. You were just following the procedures, um, and you did your best. There's no doubt that every one of you willing workers did your best, but you didn't know what to do or why. Next one, really, really important, drive out fear. Me telling you any day could be your last um, is not good. Workers need to be field valued. 
um, encourage them to look for better ways to, to do things. How can we improve? I asked you at the beginning of the semester, a week ago, um, what could I do to be better? And I think as we're going to go through the semester, I'm going to throw this in some of the reflections. So how to do things better. Ensure that leaders are approachable and they work with teams in the company's best interest. Okay, uh, Bosses who aren't engaged, um, they could create a sense of fear. Sometimes they yell and scream. That's not a good way of, of doing it. Um, hey, maybe I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll put a little uh, video in here. So let's take a look at that video, whatever it is I find. Break down barriers between departments. A lot of times we have different areas, uh, functions, if you will, within the bigger organizations. And there's this internal concept, okay? Um, let me just use a few examples, is that you, I would suggest, are the customer of the college. And I'm what you might refer to on the teaching faculty, um, is that I'm delivering the teaching, the education, the learning, facilitating learning with you um, is me. But I have a whole pile of support areas that make all of this possible. We got our IT function, CIT function, we got the software, when we're on campus we have facilities, there's human resources that hire us, and there's processing, on and on and on. And if some of these are focusing on just their area as opposed to working together, uh, quality can get messed up. I'm going to ask you to think about that in this week's reflection. Um, build a shared vision. Uh, use a cross-functional team to build understanding and reduce adversarial relations. Um, yeah, sometimes I can be really adversarial and, you know, go against things. Um, be, and that's not always good. So having cross-functional teams becomes important. Um, the focus on collaboration and consensus instead of compromise. I'll work as a team. 10, get rid of slogans, okay? Work harder, do better, do your best every day. Um, don't let words and nice sounding phrases replace leadership. Um, 11, eliminate quotas. Look at how the process carried out, just not numerical targets. Um, Deming said that production targets encourage high output and low quality. We saw that. We reduced the error rate, but the quality of our white beads went down. Uh, but you've got to provide that support and resources so that the production levels and quality are high and achievable. Without putting the support and resources, it isn't going to change anything. Measure the process rather than the people. That's going to take us all the way back here. 85% of the reasons for failure are deficiencies in the system and process rather than the employee. The role of management is to change the process. Okay. Now, this is where we left it a minute ago. Measure the process. Now, one of the things, and this will go back, um, it's called Management by Objectives. And it was originally devised by Peter Drucker in 1954 and espoused by Jack Welch at GE uh, in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, when we look at it, it's you start, you start by setting organizational objectives. That cascades to the employees, they're monitored, performance is evaluated, reward performance, and then you start the process all over. Now, in concept, this does make a lot of sense. You want to make sure we're all going in the same direction, uh, which is consistent with Dr. Deming. Um, but what started happening is that these, so oftentimes they were top-down. They should have been an interactive process of setting goals, but they tended to be set top-down. And again, they focused on the behavior of the individual. These will work if you take the process approach, but oftentimes it 
focused on short-term goals or outcomes as opposed to long-term um, results. Now, it doesn't have the other functions of management in here because there's nothing about training. How do we relate it to what the customer wants? But if done right, they can work. But what happens is that a lot of times this jumps out and it's the process that needs fixing and you, the employee, don't have any control over that. Um, so uh, manage my objectives, Peter Drucker. Um, remove barriers to pride of Allow everyone to take pride in their work without being rated or compared. Treat workers the same. Don't make them compete. Uh, over time, the quality system will naturally raise the level of everyone's work to an equally high level. This has been going on for a long, long time, and sometimes it works, but having that constancy of purpose uh, becomes important. Implement education and self-improvement. Improve the skills. We've talked about skills, skills of workers. Learn new skills as you prepare for future challenges. This is gonna be, hopefully, somebody will pick up on this and do um, an article on this. Um, build skills into your workforce to make them adaptable, to fit into these new roles. And 14, emphasize, implement leadership. Emphasize the importance of management and transformational leadership. Find ways to reach full potential of uh, of the organization. Um, expect your supervisors and managers to understand the workers and the process they use. A lot of times managers have no clue what the process is. Um, don't simply supervise, okay? Provide support and resources to make it successful. Figure out what each person actually needs to do his or her best. It takes work. The last quote from here is, learning is not compulsory, neither is survival. With that, that's Dr. Deming. Um, you should walk away with a key, few key points. One in my mind that's most important for you, it's constancy of purpose. And number two, 85% of the time it's the process, not the people. So fix the process, not the people. Foundational. If you have any questions, let me know.